using the calculator efficiently. Now in the past it's been very difficult to teach students how to use a calculator because there's been so many different types of calculator. Um, but currently I think um, most serious students have, um, especially GCSE students, have a Casio calculator of this type with a natural VPAM. So it allows you to type things in virtually exactly as they're written. And there's one thing that you have to be aware of most of the time, and that's to do with squaring negative numbers. And I'll just show you that now. So, and also it helps if you you can figure out how the order of things are going. So this square root is outside all of this, so we need to do that first. We put a square root, and everything we're going to type now goes inside the square root. Now I'm going to deliberately make a mistake here and you'll see why when I've finished. Okay, now that looks exactly as what I've written there. But if I press the equals button, it tells me it's a maths error. And why is that? Well, the reason is because when you're squaring negative seven on the calc this calculator, if you don't put a bracket around the minus seven, it will just square the seven and then it will take it away. So it'll be, it'll be take away seven squared rather than minus seven squared. So you need to put a bracket around anything that's negative and squared. And that, for g in general, it might might be a bad idea to put a negative a bracket around any negative that you're using a power on. Odd powers don't matter, but even powers they should be positive numbers, and it will make a mistake on that. So now, if we press equals, we get the square root of 58. So the calculator says the square root of 58. And there's nothing wrong with that. That's a perfectly valid answer. But if you're asked to write to a certain number of decimal places say one decimal place that would be 7.6 and this button here moves you between the exact answer and a decimal answer okay next one okay we've got something squared so this bracket needs to go around 0 0.8 oops let's actually put the 0 in it doesn't matter you can put 0 0.8 um, it's slightly quicker but it looks neat if you put 0 0.8 and then we're just going to square that by pressing the square button and that's going to give us that fraction uh, and again we can round that to one decimal place or we can go back to the fraction one other thing to note here is that when we've got this fraction, this top every fraction is our standard fraction answer you can change that if you prefer a mixed number if you go shift into the setup, the second page, you've got a choice between a top heavy fraction, improper fraction, or a mixed number. So if I turn to a mixed number, we get 25 and 251 and 625. I tend to prefer the um, top heavy fraction because then you can, often with this small numbers, you can figure out what things to cancel. Okay, next one. Okay, a power button. So, but we've got a fraction thing here. Now, I believe we could probably do this. So we could put the power to the top line. Let's see what happens. To come out of the power, take away 8.7. If we didn't do that, we'd be taking away 8.7 from the power, and it'd be doing 3 to the power of minus 4.7, which would be totally wrong. So we need to come out of the power, minus 8.7. Now, if I press the fraction button there, you see it's only putting the second bit under the fraction, so that doesn't work. So we need to. What we need to do is we need to get the fraction bucket in first. Put the 3 to the power of 4, come out of the power, minus 8.7, then go to the bottom of the fraction, 18 plus 27.1 equals. Now, let's write that down. Thinking about it, going back to the other one, well, you can see here I've got this in, this got dots above here, that's the, telling you where the decimal recurs. I just put 1.6. Again, we can turn the recurring on and off. If I can remember how. There it is, number 4. The recurring on and off. I tend to have it off because often you don't see the dot if you're not careful. Um, going back to typing this, this expression in, if we got to the point where we got 3 to the power of 4 minus 8.7 and we realize that we need to do a fraction but we don't want to have to write the fraction. What we could do is go to the answer, press equals to get the answer, that's what the top equals, and then use the answer button as a fraction, because that's the answer to the top, plus 27.1, and it would give you the same answer. 
Okay, three questions for you to practice. Pause the video and have a go. Okay, so here we go. Here's the answers to these. Okay, the first one, square root. Remember to put a bracket around the negative number before you square it. And notice when I press the square button there, I didn't need to come out of that that power. It automatically does it, but this one, you can see it stays up in the power because it might be a bigger number. You don't need to come out of that. It will just tell us the answer is a square root of 161 or approximately 12.7. Next one, 0.4 times 5.7, close bracket squared. And I've done it again, I've forgotten to do the bottom bit, so I'm going to press equals, use that answer, put that as a fraction over 3.4 plus 0.18, and get 1.4, sorry, 1. Point, let's put 1.45 to 3 cent figures, or 1.5. And it doesn't actually give any decimal answer because it's too complicated. Okay, now one complicated one to finish. The cube root, so a little three there. That means the cube root, so we need to use there's a root power there. We could actually use this one here, which would give us allow us to put any root we want in, but we do actually have a cube root button, so we could do that. And then we've got a fraction in there, so we need a fraction inside there. And we've got seven to the power of three, seven cubed minus 80 and again we don't need to come out of the power because it was a, a special button for that 0.21 plus 0.37 equals 7.68 there you go that's how to use your calculator to type complicated calculations in